All right, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be joined today with the amazing Julie Burns, who I just feel like the Lord really wants her to be a part of my life. And I'm so thankful that Julie could join us on the show today. Welcome, Julie. Hello. Nice Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, you too. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read you all a little short bio about Julie and the amazing work that she has been doing. Julie has been captivating audiences for more than 30 years by bringing education alive with real life stories. Participants feel her passion for healing and enhancing the human condition as she understands the human heart, soul, and body as she shares her health transformation and healing from trauma. Exploring the space between the brain and the heart, Julie takes you on a journey to boldly go where most of us do not want to go. Her unique work experiences combined with wisdom, encouragement, and love of teaching will guide you on the greatest thrill ride of your life. Julie explores the root cause of the root cause, which reconnects the head and the heart, allowing you to live fully alive and come home to your true self. Oh, I love that bio, Julie, and it leaves me with so many questions. Yes. So my first one being, and if you don't feel comfortable sharing, that's totally fine, but you mentioned your own personal trauma. Tell me about how your personal story has brought you to this path of really diving deep into holistic health and functional medicine. That's that's good. And, and yes, I will share. Um, uh, I, I remember the incidences. There were a couple of incidents when I was young, once when I was five, and again at 12, that um, I was molested uh, by, a, you know, the usual family friend thing. Um, and I, I really, the 12 one just seemed to be something I sh needed to heal from more than the five-year-old incident. But during um, uh, about three, four, let's see, about five years ago, uh, Minnesota hosted the uh, Super Bowl. And so there was a lot, a ton of, of advertising on, you know, beware of the sex trafficking and, and the horrors of that and just really increased education on sex trafficking. And I, for the first time, was getting PTSD from the incident when I was five. And um, I'm like, well, what's going on? And I was, I was almost 60 years old. I'm like, I'm 59 years old. Why is this coming up now? It really, it was it was bad. And as a nurse, I, I knew about PTSD and that sort of thing. But because I help people, you know, we think we're immune to those things. But it really took me on a ride like, whoa. But then it really explored like the impact of those incidences in my health today and how, wow. I mean, I in natural health, we work to, to find the root cause of the problem. And we usually do. But I also know throughout the years that most of the people I saw were women and almost everybody had chronic problems and, and the data learning from conferences and, and the ACE study, which is um, adverse childhood events study, um, that almost all chronic illness is related to childhood trauma. And I'm like, ooh, you know, um, work a lot with mind, body, soul. So, um, you know, when I, I I'm forthright with the fact that I'm a faith-based, like Christian faith-based healthcare professional. So I do offer to pray with my my um, clients. Don't push it, but just I let them know. Um, just because there's so many other avenues of healing out there, I just wanna. I just like I don't work alone. Um, and um, and so it just when I meet with people, uh, women, been everywhere, exhausted all their options in the medical world, come to me and just like there's nothing left of them. And so I say, okay, mind, body, spirit, we have to you know, look at everything and, and we can identify these things, but I'm not a counselor. I'm not a, you know, a minister or, you know, a chaplain or anything like that, but it can identify that, the need for healing. And it was just inevitable. If it didn't come out in the first visit, it was the second or third. And then, yes, you're right. You, you know, I'm like, whoa, you know, I, I had no idea. The stories I've heard over the years are, are very traumatic. So, um, so it just all of these things accumulated to, wow, um, this chronic illness and childhood trauma, um, not realizing how, how prevalent this is. I mean, we, we know the statistics of one out of four college women are raped. Oh my God, that statistic could have changed. But you're looking at, these are women who yeah, my uncle, my dad, you know, um, alcoholic parents, you know, it doesn't have to always be sexual abuse, but just the physical trauma 
or the trauma from not not being loved the way you needed to be loved as a child. Um, so your your talents and your gifts weren't nurtured. So it was it's just all of this stuff, but related to oh childhood trauma, um, either absence, maybe a parent died when they were young, maybe one or two of the parents were alcoholics, their whole life they've lived on eggshells, which leads to then their body being in that constant fight, flight, freeze, which shuts off your digestion and, and the whole cascade forever. And I'm like, oh, the whole thing about the body keeping the score. And I'm like, oh, that applied to me too. You know, when you're when you're in the field of helping people, it's hard to identify in yourself. So, um, so that that led me to to many different ways of trying to heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually from the trauma, um, and uh, kind of led me to where I am today, which is just really focusing in, niching down on, wow, we we have to get to the root cause of the root cause here, um, to really bring about full complete healing, which is really coming home to your true self healing the wounds and really um, relying on the master healer for that healing. So, yeah. I, I love that so much too, Julie, because as we, as we know, working in this field, a lot of times within holistic health, there is a lot of new ageism that permeates this space. And so really having um, someone like yourself that is um, a, a Christian, right, that people can feel comfortable and confident opening up to and not worried that you're going to have any, um, you know, new ageism or, or even just meditation practices that are against our Christian faith, um, but they feel like it's finally a safe space, right? Because because these are really probing some wounds and we need to first know that we're safe to be able to do that. So my question for you is, do you think that we can, well, actually I have two. Do you think that we can heal um, without addressing trauma? And um, what about people that have like lowercase t trauma? You kind of hit a little bit on that, but you know, a, a lot of times people will come to me and say, well, it's not as bad as somebody else had it, right? And hearing your story, Julie, they may say that right out of the gate. It's right. nothing like you lived through, but yet we still can have a lot of trauma and these deep spiritual wounds that we need to probe and spend some time on. So I'm gonna turn those over to you. I, I I do not believe that you can have complete true healing without ha having it be Christian based. You know the, the healing powers of Jesus Christ, um, which then leads me to okay, how do I work with people who who don't have that same belief? And then it's like, well, Jesus didn't go around saying, "Hey, I'm Jesus, I'm the healer." He he just was who he was, and and we're the body of Christ, so we have to be his hands and his feet and his voice, and and the greatest of these is love. So that's what we have to exude and and through that you're the vessel and we have to trust that we're giving the right words to say um to bring about that healing because you 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 sometimes are the only person that they can relate to that has ever listened to them has believed in them and looked them in the eye and said that they're worthy um i i worked in the mental health field for a number of years as well and um you know, sometimes the patients would leave the mental health unit and I would look them in the eye, which is hard to do now because everything's on computer. And I'm like, look them in the eye. You know, what's your plan? What's your support system? And I said, well, how about faith? Um, because faith is usually part of part of people's um, support system when they leave. And well, I believe in God. I said, good. Do you believe God made you? And they say, yeah. And I said, and I look them in the eye and I mean it with my heart. I just said, God does not make junk. And they're like, never had heard that before. And I say, God made you. They, if they believe that God made them and they hear them like, I'm not junk. I mean, and then we we send them out the door and it's like, and pray, you know, like, you know, it's really hard because there's people that need help and we, we aren't able to help and do everything that we possibly can. Um, so that, yes, the healing. And um, we, we can minimize our experiences and I could do that because, well, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like this one. It wasn't like that one. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're addicted to food or if you're addicted to meth or alcohol um, or pornography. The, that addiction piece is still there and, and you have to get to that root cause of what's causing that. They're all bad and it can seem like, well, over-exercising isn't as bad as meth. Well, it, it isn't. I mean, the, the after effects aren't seemingly as bad 
However, that same problem, that same feeling of not knowing yourself, not knowing your worth and your value is still a problem that has to be addressed or it's just going to go kittywampus in another direction. So um, we very good. I mean, queen of, of minimizing. Well, it wasn't this. It wasn't that. And it's like, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be worse and there's always going to be better. So that that importance of not comparing can go either way. Um, the big thing is don't ignore it. If if it's enlightened to you, it's like, okay, let's dig deeper. And that that's that painful journey. And, and that's what I've told many of my clients over the years. I said, the hardest part about your healing journey is going to be looking at yourself in the mirror and loving who you see. And, um, and you know, you want to lose weight? Um, well, are you sleeping? I know, how are your bowels moving? Like, Number one above that, even though, is if you love the person that you see in the mirror, that's the first step to being at a healthy weight. Um, so that is a hard journey, but it, but it's so, I mean, as you know, that it, it's explosively beautiful and, and that wholeness that comes in being free from that wound or wounds um, is, yes, it, it is tremendous. But yes, we do mi mi minimize and it doesn't matter. We, yeah. we can't put a grade on that, so. Yeah, I love that so much. And that's something um, I, I find myself spending a lot of time with clients on too, right? What Whatever that next right step is that we need to make, we're not going to prioritize it. Or um, even, you know, even if we understand how it's good for our body, we don't conceptualize why it's important to prioritize our body unless we first love ourself and love our body. And I think that there is this disconnect, right? When, when our, like, um, our own personal dialogue is negative and toxic. Um, and then we know we should eat that salad for lunch. We're like, well, I don't really care what happens to me because, you know, whatever that, um, you know, perhaps it's an inner vow from uh, drama from childhood or whatever it is. I 100% I agree. I, I always, I'd like to talk about it as the mean girl upstairs, right? Like yeah. if there's a constant mean girl upstairs, you need to stop and rewrite that before we can really yeah. move forward in your health journey. That's such an important piece. I love that. Yeah. So what are some of your um, favorite resources or maybe for someone who isn't quite ready to, um, um, right. Part of this, like identifying that trauma needs to be worked through is to be able to um, take the time and prioritize sitting down with someone such as yourself and say, OK, this is something I need some help and support to walk through now. So what are some things you would say to someone that isn't quite sure they're ready to own it yet, to own that the fact that they need to um, have some help working through these things? And as you, you probably know, working with them, by the time you within the first 10 minutes, you know, if, if they're going to be really open with you or reserved. And and so I, I usually start with if they come in because they're fatigued, okay, let's address that, you know, and, and I do offer supplements. We always talk about nutrition um, and not big exercise. Most of the time I'm telling people back off, just take a walk. A walk is going to do you better than some massive exercise program. That's all your body can handle right now. So to just kind of like walk with them, what are you eating? You know, how are you sleeping? Um, so let's say they're asleep or fatigue or they can't move their bowels. That's a big one. Um, so work that. Um, try to try to give them something that's going to help them right away, which you don't know, but um, they're going to have some faith in you then that oh they do know what they're talking about. Um, but I'm I'm. From the front, I say our, our body, you know, breaks down emotionally, you know, spiritual or spiritually, emotionally, mechanically, and nutritionally. So I'll address all these things. Um, if if they're not open to it, might be the second or third visit. I said, you know, you're you plateaued. Typically, when that happens, nothing we do from here as far as supplementing whatever is going to work until we address that emotional, work, because it locks you in. It it binds you up basically and in your body won't go in that other direction until this wound is addressed um so then then i have to have those i want those resources you know their chaplain or counselor and i, I prefer i just say you know i i have a preference for spirit you know for christian counselors so i have a list of those um and refer them um so that's that's how i work it now um and I, I've um, and I'm, I'm currently a um, strategist for the um, the women's school, which is I host the um, Art of Being a Woman Masterclass. And um, some of my the people in in my group, I've worked with them for a long time with their health. 
And it's like, you know, they come to me, I said, you know what, I'm, go I'm not going to lie to you at this point. This is what you need is go through the class. I said, you can, you can choose to spend on supplements, but until we address these things, it's going to be there. And, and that's great for me. That's, you know, nice income, but that's, I want, you know, do you want true healing? You know, this is what you want. Then we have to look at this area between the head and the heart. And um, it's, it's been, it's been it's so transformative it's just so fun to see the growth in people when they kind of oh oh um and i think we all do it we like that oh that's why i do that that's why i say that about myself all the time i didn't realize you know they're they're, they're awakening to themselves or and getting to know who they are so the beauty in that and that true healing and, and, and just me not doing that for so many years and knowing the health problems that can occur and the blood pressure and the you know, chronic fatigue and and that's usually people they get long haul COVID and we get long haul um, chronic Lyme and you know there's all these chronic things that it, there is really not a diagnosis with that's why I think there's just more syndromes and isms and asms and algas because there's no really diagnosis and it's it, you know then that there's that piece so that coming coming alive and open to your true self and really that's your heart your soul um, the emotion associated with the heart is joy our heads work really really good but our heart we just don't believe we don't believe we're worthy we don't trust people because we're hurt and wounded so yeah, yeah. so you just take it step by step wherever they're at some people don't come back they're not ready and like okay you know it's just like um they're not ready so yeah yeah i love that and i love that um i personally did the woman's school back in oh sh what year was that? 20, 2020. Um, oh. Actually, it was. It ended up being a really beautiful time to do the women's school. Yes. The world kind of stopped and uh -huh. everything slowed down. And I was expecting uh -huh. baby number five, um, oh. which was a very fun time to to learn how to dream again, right? To reconcile a lot of that. What are the ways I'm holding myself back? I love that. I love um, the tools in the women's school. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's yeah. Now I could get to use all those tools from my chronological maturity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just, um, what I learned with it and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not the usual age, um, but if I'm learning at this age, this is for everybody. And um, so the, the beauty of it is it doesn't matter how old you are, um, if you, you're healthy or not. Um, it, it's just, we all need that, that look inside of us, into our heart and our soul. So. For sure. And it's never too late, right? It's never too late to pursue that healing and wholeness. And I think that's right. something that we need to always remember. It it doesn't matter what our reasons are for finally deciding that I can't carry this anymore, but it's right. never too late to right. pursue that, that health right. and that wholeness. Oh, I love that, Julie. Can you tell us how um, people can find you online? Well, that's a good question. I don't have um, I, I, my business name. It is natural and digestive health. Um, and that's been the business name. That's my website. And then I also pull in the Julie Bruins coaching in there. So it's um, natural and digestive health. My phone number is on there. Also have a, have a Facebook page that incorporates both the, the natural health and the, the um, coaching. So yeah, pull it all together. So yeah. Wonderful. I'll put those links in the um, in the description to this video as well. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Julie. This was such a lovely conversation, and I just really appreciate your time coming on here and sharing a little bit of your story with us. And, and it's inspiring for me to see the younger population on fire with their faith um, and believing in holistic health and healing. Um, I, I, any Anytime a young woman comes in and they're fatigued and depressed, I said, are you taking artificial birth control? Yes. I said, you know, here's the data on that. Here's what you're doing. And it's like, okay, you know, there's a, and, and it's like, once they know, they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, so I, I'm so happy to, to see businesses like yours, um, helping women teach them the truth. Um, because you know that sets you free. So yeah. cool. thank yeah. you so much, Julie. I really appreciate it. Thank you again for coming on today. All right.